Hi guys, uh, my name is Annabelle. Well, just Senia Matamoros. My middle name is Annabelle. And uh, I am a professor at Universidad Técnica de Machala. And today I'm going to share a strategy uh, and a technique with you guys. And I hope you like it. Um, well, uh, I have a master's from Kansas State University and I've been a teacher for about 20 years, okay? So what is it that I have for you today? Uh, I'm going to tell you about the natural approach and, and this strategy I used, which was using PowerPoint videos for additional language exposure, okay? So first I'm going to, uh, we're going to review the natural approach to make sure we're all on the same page. And then I will tell you about the PowerPoint videos and how this uh, worked, okay? All right, so basically, go to the next slide, here we are. Okay, so what is the natural approach? I, you have here a picture of the book because I got it. And I got it from Amazon. And it's a fantastic book, okay? And this uh, method was, or this approach was uh, developed by Stephen Krashen and Tracy Terrell. And it's about language acquisition in the classroom. Okay, so I'm going to uh, go over acquisition versus learning, okay? And acquisition is acquiring the language almost as you learn your first language, okay? It, this is about interaction, okay? Learning the language naturally, okay? Um, and learning is based on learning the forms of the language. This is what uh, most teachers do in the classroom. They teach the grammar and they practice the grammar based on a topic and then uh, they focus on that, okay? Acquisition is not grammar related. It's about being able to interact, okay? Being able to express a message. And most importantly, be, it's about being able to uh, get the message, okay? So these two authors uh, suggest that ample exposure to language in the acquisition form is what makes the language stick, okay? In other words, when we, uh, when students learn the language, when they learn the structures, I mean, there's nothing wrong with that, but uh, they are not able to communicate, right? And on the other hand, what they suggest is that acquisition is what makes the language uh, stay in their brains. And uh, with this uh, approach, they can actually use the language to communicate, okay? Alrighty, and here I have a short summary, summary about how, uh, the question is, how does the natural approach work? Wait, you will have time probably later to read this text, okay, that I got from the book. But basically what it says is that acquisition happens when we understand what is being said. Okay, we have to get the message. Okay, how do we do that? Uh, well, we can use anything that we have around us or ourselves. Like for example, if I'm trying to, uh, uh, I'm reading something and then I read the first sentence or the second sentence, I have to make sure my students under understand the message. Okay, they have to understand and I, how can I do that? Well, I can draw pictures, I can do mimics, I can give examples, okay? I can uh, ask students to come to the front and uh, show them with these students. I can point, I can do many things, okay? But the idea is that they understand the message. The message has to be understood, okay? And if they are exposed to language over and over and over again in uh, meaningful ways, in real situ kind of like real situations, well, that's what will help them, uh, uh, that's what is going to help them communicate, okay? That's what's going to make them communicate, actually. Another thing they say is that the effective filter protocol must be applied, meaning a relaxed atmosphere is a must, okay? And we have to remove all the all of the stress from the students. Okay, we cannot threaten the students, uh, and then we cannot do any of those things. We have to make sure that the class or the lesson is re is relaxed. Okay, and uh, entertaining and fun and meaningful. Okay, so and right here, okay, it says a little bit more about the natural approach. So I got you uh, 
here that says comprehension precedes production. You start by making sure the message is understood, okay? Now it says comprehension precedes production, okay? It means that our focus is gonna be comprehension, okay? We're gonna focus on that, on reading and listening, okay? And uh, speaking and uh, writing, okay? We're gonna work on that too, okay? But we're not gonna focus 100% on that, okay? And if you read the book or you learn a little bit about this method online, you will see how that works. So uh, you, you start by making sure the message is understood, like I said before, by doing mimics, drawing pictures, giving examples and things like that. So it says right here that production emerges in stages because that's one of the things we want. We want students to understand, but at the same time, we want them to be able to communicate. So how does this happen? How does this emerge, okay? So first, uh, uh, we're going to see nonverbal communication, and that's what we're looking for at that point, okay? Like, for example, if I say, that, uh, if I say show me the car, so they will point, okay? And uh, how do you feel? To, are you happy today? They will smile, okay? Something like that, nonverbal communication, showing comprehension, okay? And then, well, we'll have a little bit of production, single word, then we can ask questions that target single words like for example what color is this uh, where is it okay and uh, or yes no questions okay like yes no and then we will see a combination of two or three words like red car or tummy hurts or something like that and then we will see phrases and after that we'll see sentences a more complex language but that's how production emerges basically okay so the purpose is to communicate about a topic. It is not grammar related. I've seen in a lot of books that, let's say that uh, they, uh, one of the objectives is to work on present continuous, for example. So the whole lesson is based on that and they show a picture and the topic is like, I don't know, the beach probably. So they will, they see the picture uh, and then they focus on present continuous. So that's not, what uh, the natural approach suggests. Actually, it's focusing on the topic and you can ask different types of questions uh, in different tenses, okay? But you're focusing on the message. You're not focusing on grammar at all. And you're focusing on this, on production. First, making sure they are able to communicate non-verbally. Then after that, making sure they are able to understand and communicate using single words and then a combination of two, of two or three words and so on, okay? Alrighty, okay. So now uh, that we reviewed the natural approach, okay, so the natural approach in the classroom. So what happened when I tried this, okay? Uh, I realized that the amount of lessons per week was not enough because I saw my students just twice a week, okay? And that was not enough time, okay? Uh, I realized that the students had to be more exposed to the language. They needed more exposure, okay? And uh, this interaction was necessary, okay? And it doesn't work if they don't have enough exposure. Another thing I realized is that uh, the classes uh, were crowded and there were a lot of students and that made it hard, okay? Because some students, uh, had a better level of English and they answered uh, before the other ones. I did, didn't let the, 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 the students who, who were beginners, they didn't let them process the information. So that was another problem I encountered. Okay, so after that, okay, I, I started thinking that I needed a solution for this problem because I wanted to use the natural approach in the classroom, but I had to solve these two problems. How, so how did I do it? I started using uh, PowerPoint uh, videos. So PowerPoint videos uh, gave me the chance uh, or allowed me to uh, prepare this kind of like interaction between the student and the video or the teacher in this case. And they could, you know, take that uh, home and they could practice at home, okay? And they are very easy to create. Uh, and uh, you can do it, uh, you know, in different ways. And I'm gonna tell you a little bit more about it in a few minutes, but I wanna show you, uh, uh, you will also see an example or an excerpt, you know, 
of a video, like a, like a section of a video, like a part of a video. Okay, so these PowerPoint videos, like I said, additional practice was required. Okay, PowerPoint videos were created ah, and the videos were sent via WhatsApp. That made it very interesting because there was no excuse, like I don't have internet at home, I don't have a laptop because all of these students had a cell phone and that made it wonderful okay so they could take that and they could watch it like when they were uh, on their beds or even in the bathroom and, and that was uh, that made it really helpful okay so now i'm going to show you uh, a, a part of a video okay and then we will talk a little bit about it okay does tanya have calculus class on tuesdays Yes, she does. Does Tanya have human rights on Wednesday? No, she doesn't. Does technical English begin at 7 o'clock? Yes, it does. Does chemistry begin at 8 o'clock? Yes, it does. Does chemistry end at 11 o'clock? Yes, it does. On Wednesday, is physics before physical education? Yes, it is. On Friday, is technical English before physics? Yes, it is. On Mondays, is physics after biology? Yes, it is. Okay, so uh, this was a video and I hope uh, you were able to, to watch it. And basically you can do it, like in that case I gave them the answers, okay? So uh, if you want to, uh, of course, before that was like the practice, because before that they were able to practice in the classroom, they learned the vocabulary and they were kind of like prepared. OK, so this was like the reinforcement. OK, they already knew the vocabulary and everything. So uh, uh, but I uh, worked on other videos. I included videos in which I added caption. Okay, that's something you can do too, like on the side, and uh, uh, that made it uh, also interesting because they could see the, the sentences and the questions written, but uh, I, I just did it different ways, okay, depending on the video, so that's something you can do, I mean, you can provide the answers or not, okay, it, it is up to you, okay. So how to record a PowerPoint video? Well, that's quite easy. So you go to Presentación con Diapositivas and it says Grabar Presentación con Diapositivas. And that's what you're going to hit. You're going to click on, on this icon and then you're just going to record. And it will record everything you say and all, also the pointer, okay, and the videos and everything that's on the screen, which makes it fantastic, okay. And well, how, how do you save it after that? Well, you go to Exportar, Crear Video, okay, Crear Un Video, and then you hear what it says, Usar Narraciones e Intervalos Grabados. That's what you're going to hit, and it's going to record everything you said. It's fantastic. You're going to love it, okay? And you can do, you can put a picture there. I mean, it, it, you can do wonderful things with it, okay? All right. Okay, so that was it. Uh, well, the results, uh, that was, let me tell you that the students were able to master the topic. And I'm not gonna say 100% because it depends on the questions uh, that, you, that you ask. But still, you know, they had a lot more exposure and they, they improved, they got much better, okay? And uh, also they were more confident because they had the opportunity to practice at home over and over. Of course, during the test, when they were tested, I didn't use the exact same questions. I changed them a little bit, uh, not too much, of course, but to make sure that they uh, 
would not memorize it like exactly the way it was. Alrighty, so let me know what you guys think. And uh, thank you so much. Alrighty.